Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Shantae Sway here today. So today I want to talk to you guys about growth or let's just not even say growth setbacks. Let's say hair setbacks, even if you aren't into like the whole growing your hair thing. So a lot of times people like, they'll do things to their hair and then they're like, oh my God, what happened? Like my hair didn't used to be like this. And they don't realize about certain things and certain steps that they took to get to that major setback when it comes to their hair journey. So I'm gonna tell you guys today some of the most common setbacks or the stage that you set for a setback that I have ran across. So the first way to set your hair back from hair health is when you color your hair. I know a lot of people are gonna hate me for even mentioning that, but it's very, it's very hard for your hair to come back from bleaching it or from major color. A lot of times people will say, oh, well, if the person does the color right, then your hair won't change. I don't believe that because with hair color, you're doing a chemical change to your hair. And we're always taught, go back to science, when you do a chemical change, is not as easy to change it back to when it was first like at the virgin state or first when it first happened so when you chemically change your hair your texture is going to react to that or your hair is going to react to that so a lot of times people will get color in their hair and then their hair won't be the same and you'll see like a few months later or maybe like even a year later two years later you'll see that the person is trying to either cut the color out or they had to cut off all their hair, or you'll see something like that. So it's very common for hair color to be what sets your hair back. Now, I know that some people have really long hair and they still color their hair. I know that some people's curls are still popping while they still color their hair, but that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like the presentation because a lot of people don't know this, but you can manipulate your hair to look a certain way, especially in pictures. So I'm not really talking about like surface level where you just kind of see it. I'm talking about actually going into someone's hair and seeing when they wash their hair that some ends are damaged or their hair doesn't take as well to products. So like three days or two days later, their hair is so, so dry or something like that. Stuff to where normally it's not out there, but that person who has colored their hair notices it because it's their hair. They know how their hair is. Number two is not cutting off your damaged ends once you realize that they're there. Now, I, when I was transitioning, I can actually attest to this. I was always like, okay, if I cut my hair, is this really gonna help? Like, am I really gonna get help from this? And I was like hanging on to my damaged ends for a while. So I went to get a diva cut, and I remember when I went into the diva cut, cut salon, she told me, she was like, you know, why did you wait so long to get your hair cut? You could have been so much further along in your journey. So I always remember that um, when she said that, I was like, really, like, dang. So when you cut off damaged ends from the very beginning or not, if you're transitioning, if you wait a few months and then you go and get your hair cut, it's a lot better for you and for your hair because then you'll be able to start even more quickly on your healthy hair journey. So you don't slow yourself down as much. And when you hang on to your damaged ends, like I said in the beginning, it can trickle up to the healthy hair. So that can definitely set your hair back. Waiting too long can set you back as far as time goes. Um, if you're a person that doesn't care about time, you're just like, whatever, I don't care. Then I guess it wouldn't be as big of a deal, but you still, want to give yourself enough time to where your hair doesn't start to notice that you're just leaving the damage ends on. And a lot of people contact me and they're like, oh, I tried your method and everything, but I do have damaged hair. Is this why it's not working? And I think to myself, like, that's the number one reason why it's not working. Like if your hair is not right, even if you do a lot of my routines, it won't turn out the same because your hair is not exactly healthy right now. Of course, if you do damage treatments and damage routines for damaged hair, then it will definitely turn out like the videos that you see. But normally I don't do a lot of damage routines. If you guys would like for me to do more routines that are geared towards damaged hair, then let me know by liking this video. 
All right, so the next thing that I want to mention is consistent heat. And this is another thing that people don't like to hear because you see people who have very long hair that straighten their hair all the time, or you'll see people who have beautiful curly hair who straighten their hair all the time. But like I said, it's really easy to look at pictures and look at someone's hair. People can manipulate their hair to look a certain way by doing twist outs and braid outs and stuff like that. But when you wash your hair, you do a wash and go, it always comes out because that's your natural texture. And so then people are able to see that there's like straight pieces from you, um, you know, straighten your hair all the time. Or if you are a person who cuts off the damaged ends a lot, you're, you'll notice that that person's hair is just getting really short. That's because the heat does take a toll on your hair, especially if you consistently do it. So you wanna take breaks and you want to do it um, as spread out as possible and pay attention to your hair. If you're a person who doesn't mind a little bit of heat damage or you don't mind your hair looking a little limp at times, then I guess it wouldn't be a problem, but if you want super healthy hair, for real, for real, then you will have to lay off the heat as much as possible. The fourth thing that I wanted to mention is using the wrong products or using the wrong routines. A lot of times I would see where people will try certain routines and it just won't be a routine that works for their hair. So their hair may be dry a lot and then it starts to be easily broken or they may have a lot of issues that wouldn't necessarily be there if they were just pay attention to their routines and not simply go off of by the book routine. So you want to make sure that you're doing routines and paying attention to your hair so that you're doing things for your hair. You can try stuff from different routines and then put it together as yours, cause that's what I did. Using the wrong products and using the wrong routines can make you feel as if your hair is set back or your hair, hair is not looking the way that you want it to look. So pay attention there guys. I wanted to mention that not allowing your hair to breathe is definitely one of the major setbacks in my opinion. If you're always doing tight styles or doing styles to where your hair is not breathing, then like, what do you expect your hair to do? It's going to start to get weak. So you want to let your hair breathe every now and then, but at the same time, it doesn't mean you can't wear like wigs or weaves or you can't do protective styles that are um, like kind of like updos. It doesn't mean that you can't do that, but you want to be very mindful of how much you're doing to your hair. You don't want to do too much to your hair to where your hair is just like, okay, enough, enough, I'm ready to get out of here, and then it breaks. <laughs> I honestly believe that when you just leave your hair alone, it will do its thing, it will start to grow, and it won't be as painful to deal with. So those were the major setbacks that can really take your hair from here to here in no time. It can be quicker than you can believe. So definitely if you guys have anything to add to this list, comment down below, let me know, and let everyone else know who comes to this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.